Today, let us take some time to study God's Word with the sermon titled, The New Covenant Engraved on Our Souls. Everyone, do you like salmon? What about pigeons? Do you like them? Among all the living creatures that God has created, the reason why I mentioned salmon and pigeons is that these two species have a very strong homing instinct to return to their homeland. Then, what makes them have this kind of instinct? God engraved something in them that makes them think, I must return to my homeland. Salmon travel from rivers to the ocean and live there. And before they die, they return to their birthplace to lay eggs and die there. You might have learned about this through various media, films, and publications. How can they travel thousands of kilometers, several hundreds of miles, through the ocean, to find their way back home? They don't have a GPS. Nowadays, we have a car GPS that tells us, in 100 meters, turn right. There is a bump coming up. Since it gives all these directions, some fully depend on it and drive accordingly. Even though salmon or pigeons don't have such tools, they still find their way back to their homeland. It is truly astounding. It is said that pigeons have a substance called magnetite implanted in their brains that enables them to travel hundreds of miles away and come back to their home. Therefore, even on a cloudy day or in the middle of the night when there is no light, pigeons can find their nest and return to it without fail. God engraved such an instinct within them. No matter how far they go and live, as strangers for several years, they inevitably return to their homeland before they die. As we witness this remarkable phenomenon, we may wonder, wouldn't there be something that God engraved within us to help us find the true home of our souls and return to it? Everyone, have you ever pondered this? God has promised to engrave a miraculous gift on the hearts of his people. Today, let us examine this carefully and think. Because of this, we were able to have this kind of faith and mindset. Through this, we came to know God the Father, God the Mother, and our home country, the Kingdom of Heaven. Let's find the answer through the Bible. God engraved an instinct in pigeons and salmon so that they can return to their homeland. Such an astounding providence of God is also found inside our souls. What could this be? Through Jeremiah chapter 31, let us carefully reflect on the topic, the new covenant engraved on our souls. Let's take a look at Jeremiah chapter 31 verse 31. In Jeremiah chapter 31 verse 31, it is written, The days are coming, declares the Lord when I will make a new covenant with the people of Israel and with the people of Judah. It will not be like the covenant I made with their ancestors when I took them by the hand to lead them out of Egypt, because they broke my covenant, though I was a husband to them, declares the Lord. This is the covenant I will make with the people of Israel after that time, declares the Lord. I will put my law. Where will God put his law? In their minds. God said, I will put my law in their minds. Since God implanted magnetite in the brains of pigeons, Without any GPS, even on cloudy days or in the middle of the night, they are able to return to their home no matter how far they have gone. Likewise, there is something God engraved in us so that we can return to our heavenly home and into the arms of Heavenly Father and Heavenly Mother. 
What did God engrave in us? He said, I will put my law in their minds. What is another way to say this? Doesn't this mean that he engraved his law in us? I will put my law in their minds and write it on their hearts. I will be the God, and they will be my people. Those who do not have God's law in them cannot find the way. They cannot find the way to heaven, and the voices of Heavenly Father and Heavenly Mother cannot work within them. If magnetite is removed from a pigeon's brain, it cannot find its home even from 10 meters away. However, God implanted a mysterious substance called magnetite in the brain of a pigeon, allowing it to return to its home, no matter how far it flies away. Furthermore, a salmon roams the ocean for many years, and when it is near death, it comes back to its homeland, lays eggs, and dies there. We can understand that there is something that God has engraved in salmon. Then, what will God engrave in his people? God says that he will engrave his law in their minds. Even though people in the world do not observe the Sabbath day and the Passover, but rather keep Christmas, they don't feel any discomfort or anxiety in their hearts. Why is that? It is because they do not have God's law in them, whereas God engraved his law in us. Because of this difference, God says, if they had been thinking of the country they had left, they would have had opportunity to return. Instead, they were longing for a better country, a heavenly one. God taught us about the kingdom of heaven and even urged us to return there. The people who have God's law in their hearts will react. God's word will have an effect on their hearts, and their souls will be moved. Even if people hear the same news about the Sabbath day, the Passover, and God the Mother, the reactions are all different. Some react deeply, some react partially, and some do not react at all. When Jesus came to this earth 2,000 years ago, he said, I have come to this earth to seek and save those who were lost from heaven. Didn't he proclaim this word? There are certain people who will react to God's voice. What do these people have in them? What did God engrave in them? God engraved his law in them, specifically, which law is it? God engraved the law of the new covenant in them. Then, let us take a look at the scene where God engraved the law of the new covenant by turning to Matthew chapter 13. Let's see Matthew chapter 13 verse 24. Jesus told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a man who sowed good seed in his field. But while everyone was sleeping, his enemy came and sowed weeds among the wheat and went away. When the wheat sprouted and formed heads, then the weeds also appeared. The owner's servants came to him and said, Sir, didn't you sow good seed in your field? Where then did the weeds come from? Who did this? An enemy did this, he replied. What did the enemy do with the weeds? The enemy sowed the weeds. The weeds were sown in some people's hearts, and the law of God was sown in other people's hearts. The weeds were sown by the enemy, the devil. On the other hand, God engraved the holy law of the truth of the new covenant in the hearts of his people. When we say, let's go to the kingdom of heaven, some respond, oh, I would rather trust my own strength. Why would you say such a thing? What if you end up in hell? They casually answer, everyone is going to hell anyway. So what's the big deal? It is because something else other than what belongs to God is engraved in them. Who sowed the weeds? Let's go to verse 37. 
In verse 37, it is written, He answered, The one who sowed the good seed is the son of man. Who sowed the good seed? It was Jesus. In other words, what law did Jesus put in us when he came to this earth? He sowed the law of the truth of the new covenant in our hearts. The field is the world, and the good seed stands for the people of the kingdom. The weeds are the people of the evil one, and the enemy who sows them is the devil. Since the devil sowed the weeds in the whole world, there is no response even though we preach the truth a hundred or a thousand times. What does that have to do with me? People rather have this kind of attitude. Everyone, what we need to do is to follow the will of God, who came to seek and save the lost, and find his lost children. We should preach to all people. Yet there is a specific characteristic of the children of God. What did God engrave in the hearts of his children? Since God engraved the law of the new covenant in their hearts, they easily understand when we tell them about God the Father and God the Mother. When we preach, as we can see from history, the Passover was abolished in A.D. 325. However, shouldn't we live a life of faith based on the truth that Jesus originally taught us? Then, they understand immediately, saying, Amen. Why is that? The words engraved in them elicit these responses. However, for those with weeds sown within them, no matter how much we preach to them, they do not respond. This is because God's law doesn't work within them. Imagine if God removes a substance from a pigeon's brain that allows it to return home easily. How drastically would the situation change compared to when that substance is implanted? For this reason, God said, I will put my law called the new covenant in their hearts. It is not the law of any person or organization in the world, but the law of God. God called the new covenant, my law, and engraved it in our hearts. Therefore, whose voice can we say this law of the new covenant is spoken by? It is God's voice, so ultimately, God's children respond when they hear his voice. The Sabbath day must be Saturday. Since God says that if we keep the Passover, he will give us eternal life, it must be good to keep. They will respond much more clearly. Why haven't I known this until now? Why didn't the pastors in the world teach me this way? God says that our heavenly family members will have such immediate reactions. Therefore, we should not choose whom to preach to, but instead, in season and out of season, we should preach to everyone. Since we don't know what is planted in people's hearts, shouldn't we deliver and proclaim God's voice to every single person? Let us move on to chapter 13 verse 16. In chapter 13 verse 16, Jesus says, But blessed are your eyes because they, what do they do, see, and your ears because they hear. We are able to see with our eyes and hear with our ears. Sometimes, we mistakenly think that God came to this earth and let us hear his voice, and we remembered his teachings with our good memory and are following them right now. However, that is not the case. Although God came to this earth and bestowed his teachings upon mankind, some people react, while others do not. If everyone were to react upon hearing the teachings, this place would be filled to the brim, leaving no empty spaces. Here in this verse, Jesus said, Blessed are your eyes because they see, and your ears because they hear. However, others could not see it even though Jesus showed it to them, nor could they hear it even though Jesus spoke to them. It is truly amazing. Therefore, shouldn't we always give thanks, honor, and glory to Father and Mother for allowing us to realize God's holy decrees, laws, and regulations of the new covenant? Let's see verse 10. 
The disciples came to him and asked, Why do you speak to the people in parables? He replied, Because the knowledge of the secrets of the kingdom of heaven has been. What has happened? It has been given to you, but not to them. Although the same content is shown, the knowledge has been given to us, but not to them. If magnetite is removed from a pigeon, it will never be able to find its way home. It is only because God placed magnetite in them that they can locate their homes precisely. In the same way, in order for us to return to our spiritual homeland, what has God engraved in us? God says that he will put the law of the new covenant in us. Since God engraved the law of the new covenant in us just like magnetite in pigeons, our ears, eyes, and hearts can respond to the voices of Heavenly Father and Heavenly Mother when their voices resound. Let us take a look at the book of John chapter 10 verse 25. Jesus answered, I did tell you, but you do not believe. God came to this earth, proclaimed the truth, taught us about the kingdom of heaven, and led us according to the teachings of the truth. Yet, what do they do? They do not believe. What is missing in them? Those who do not have the law of the new covenant of God cannot accept God or his teachings. Verse 25. The works I do in my Father's name testify about me, but you do not believe because you are not my sheep. Verse 27. What do my sheep do? My sheep listen to my voice, I know them, and they follow me. I give them eternal life, and they shall never perish. No one will snatch them out of my hand. My Father, who has given them to me, is greater than all. No one can snatch them out of my Father's hand. I and the Father are one. Jesus meant, since you are not my sheep, no matter how many times I speak the truth, you will not listen. Your eyes are blinded, your ears are covered, and your hearts are closed. What are they missing? This is all because they do not have the law of the new covenant in them. Then, what is the reason that we are able to be here today? Why did Jesus say that we are blessed? What guided us to come to Zion? It is the new covenant, the law of truth within us. It is the law of God, the new covenant God engraved in us, that enabled us to respond to his holy word and guided us to come to Zion. In other words, God opened our eyes, our ears, and our hearts and made them react to his words. God has already created them in this way. Hence, no matter how Satan tries to hinder us, we should not be affected by any obstacles. We must always cherish the truth of the new covenant God has given to us. We have come to Zion, following the voices of the Spirit and the Bride, who are calling mankind to come. Therefore, let us never fail to partake of the glory of salvation that Heavenly Father and Heavenly Mother bestow in Zion. Let us turn to Isaiah chapter 29 verse 9 and find out what Jesus and the prophets said to those who do not have the law of the new covenant in their hearts. In Isaiah chapter 29 verse 9, it is written, Be stunned and amazed, blind yourselves and be sightless, be drunk, but not from wine, stagger, but not from beer. The Lord has brought over you a deep sleep. He has sealed your eyes, the prophets. He has covered your heads, the seers. For you, this whole vision, this vision indicates the Bible, right? This whole Bible is nothing but words sealed in a scroll. And if you give the scroll to someone who can read, and say, read this, please, they will answer. How will they answer? Are they able to read this? 
I can't, it is sealed. They have no choice but to say, I have no idea what this means. It is because God didn't put in them the ability to understand it. Let us continue with verse 12. Or if you give the scroll to someone who cannot read, and say, read this, please, they will answer, I don't know how to read. It is impossible for those who can read, and those who cannot read to interpret this scroll. Then, what type of people are those who are referred to as, someone who can read, and, someone who cannot read? Let us continue with verse 13. The Lord says, These people come near to me with their mouth and honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. Their worship of me is based on, what kind of rules? Merely human rules they have been taught. They keep human rules. In other words, the weeds sown by Satan are abundant in them. There is a stark difference between the people who have God's law sown by God in their hearts and the people who have the weeds sown by Satan in their hearts. Therefore, no matter how much we preach the word of God to them, there is no response. To borrow a phrase from the people of the world, there is no connection. Although a signal has been sent, they are unable to receive it. Can they accept God's commandments by adhering to the rules of men? No, they cannot. That is why if we give the scroll to someone who can read, and say, read this, please, they will answer, I can't, it is sealed. Or if we give the Bible to someone who cannot read, and say, read this, please, they will answer, I don't know how to read. Both say that they cannot read. Since God's law is not in their hearts, to them, God's holy words become a book that cannot be understood. This is referred to as, wonder, in the Bible. They boast of their knowledge as those who possess specialized knowledge in the world. Thus, they ought to be well informed about God's will. However, in reality, they know nothing of God's will. It is truly a mysterious and astonishing phenomenon. Let us continue with verse 13. The Lord says, These people come near to me with their mouth and honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. Their worship of me is based on merely human rules they have been taught. Therefore once more I will astound these people with wonder upon wonder, with mysterious and extraordinary things. The wisdom of the wise. What will happen to it? Will perish, the intelligence of the intelligent will vanish. Some may think, that person appears to be highly intelligent, knowledgeable, and able to speak several foreign languages. With that level of intellect, that person would be able to analyze the Bible thoroughly. However, God prophesied that the wisdom of the wise will perish, and the intelligence of the intelligent will vanish. What is missing within them? There is no law of God in them. God said, I will put my law in their minds. I will be the God, and they will be my people. Therefore, how blessed are you and I to be in this place today? Since God has bestowed blessings upon us and led us here, we are able to be here today. Outwardly, you may think, this deaconess led me here. It may appear as if someone led us here. However, when they conveyed the voices of Heavenly Father and Heavenly Mother to us, the law of God within us responded. To put it simply, the connection was made. That was why we could say, I can totally understand. This is the true way to live the life of faith. We could immediately hit our knees and say, I've been deceived for 30 years. I was so blind and kept Sunday worship and Christmas, praying countless times in front of the cross as if it possessed some mysterious power. In this way, what happened when God's law engraved in us began to respond to God's word? We came to understand everything.
We could realize, all this time, I thought I was serving God correctly, but in reality, I was worshipping the sun god, which is most detestable to God. It is written that such understanding is engraved in the hearts of God's people. Since it is engraved on our souls and planted in our hearts, we can quickly understand the Sabbath day and the Passover. Our eyes, ears, and hearts are open. However, no matter how wise and intelligent people may be, if the rules of men are deeply rooted in their hearts, they will not respond to God's righteous laws in the Bible. In Ezekiel chapter 47, it is written, the water of life flowing from the sanctuary will become a great river and flow into the sea, making the salt water fresh. Wherever the river flows, everything will live. Among them, there are beings who cannot become fresh. It is written, the swamps and marshes will not become fresh. Even if the water of life flows into them, it becomes of no use to them. All the teachings in the 66 books of the Bible are more precious to us than life itself. Through these teachings of the Bible, Father and Mother grant us the senses and the discernment so that we can return to the eternal kingdom of heaven, don't they? As for salmon, scientists have not yet discovered the exact secret of salmon returning to their homeland. Yet, a university in the United States conducted an experiment on salmon in Canada, and as a result of repeated experiments, they could find a clue. Doesn't the Earth have a magnetic field? There are the North and South Poles. They partially discovered how salmon find their way home by using the Earth's magnetic field. If God had not implanted in salmon an ability to use Earth's magnetic field, once they go out into the ocean, they would never be able to return to their homeland. However, whenever it is time for salmon to lay eggs, they return to their homeland, lay eggs, and die there. God granted salmon something amazing so that they can repeat this cycle of life. When we observe children at a young age, they have difficulty finding their way home. They do not possess exceptional ability like that of salmon. When they leave home, they only know how to move forward, not how to return. God planted something inside pigeons and salmon that enabled them to return to their homes. They received such an ability from God. Likewise, what did God engrave in us that makes us determined to return to our eternal heavenly home? God says, I will put my law in their hearts. Therefore, whenever my voice resounds, my children will surely respond. This means God's children will understand. That is why Jesus said, Blessed are your eyes because they see, your ears because they hear, and your hearts because they understand. To others, he said, Though seeing, they may not see, and though hearing, they may not hear nor understand. Let us never lose the law of the truth of life that God has given us so that we will be able to enjoy eternal life and blessings when we enter the kingdom of heaven. Since there is such a promise in the truth, we should be proud of our truth. How blessed are we that God has engraved his law in us. We can say that we are classified as those who have been greatly blessed, hoping that everyone will receive more blessings and grace when we return to the eternal kingdom of heaven, I would like to conclude today's sermon. Thank you very much.